I can if I can share this with you today, and I can be honest with you, and I, I, I can just be 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 clear to you this morning. We are living the Christian life on the surface. And when you're living the Christian life, if you plant a tree and you just pluck that tree on the surface, you know that the tree is not going to last very long. And many of us are planted, yes. And we're good people, yes. And we have, you know, we have a, a wonderful, um, you know, spirit about us and all of those things. But we're not planted in the ground. We're not planted in the Word. We're not planted in prayer. We're not planted in fasting. And, and, and life just bashes us around and the devil just bashes us around and we have no power and there's no authority in our life and, and God has given us the power and the authority but because we have not prayed, because we have not fasted, because we have not spent the time. We're not reaping the blessings that God has for us. God has wants to bless you. God wants to pour out wheat. We are living too much in, in on the surface. I want all that God has for me. And I want God, all that God has for my family. And I want all that God has for you and for the church and for the believer. And, and it grieves my heart to see that we are not there. Because we need to multiply and see other people saved and brought into the kingdom of God. But it will not happen until church if you want to change what's going on in your home and in your family, you've got to get back to the basics. You've got to say, this is enough is enough. And that's what David was saying. Lord, it's, it's enough. Lord, you have been our dwelling place for generations, God. And, and we, say, we say to God, yes, Lord, you have, you have been my dwelling place. I've been serving you for 20 and 30 years. I've been singing on the choir. I've been doing this for all. And that should carry me through church. It will not carry you through. Talks about before the mountains. He said, but thou turnest man to destruction and sayest return. You know, you know why destruction comes to our life? Because we need to return to God. If we return to God, the destruction will stop. If America and Canada and countries in Europe, and if our world will turn back to God, we have forsaken God. We have kicked God out of the schools. We have kicked God out of the classrooms. We have kicked God out of the government. We have kicked God out of parliament. And we have kicked God out of our lives. We say, God, we don't want to have any part of you. We want to do our own thing. We want to come and go and do as we like. And God says, go. Do as you like. But when destruction comes, because what happens is, when man is left to his own devices and his own way, you leave a child, take a child, and you leave a child to his, his own devices and his own way, destruction will come. You leave the children of men, you leave us to our own devices and our own de de ways, and it's happened throughout Scripture. The Bible says the very thought and intent of man's heart was wicked. Continually, We are prone to wickedness because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But God is saying to us, it doesn't have to be that way because I've sent Jesus Christ and he has won the victory and he was victorious over sin, hell, death, and the grave. And you can live a victorious life. But it's only going to come, church, as we begin to seek the face of God with our whole heart. You know, it, 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 um, I've, I've been asking myself the question. I've really been examining and looking at the church and looking at the church of God and looking at the church at large. And we have beautiful buildings and we have beautiful vehicles and we have beautiful instruments and we have beautiful carpet and we have electric lights and we have all of these things that are available to us. And yet, we are worse off than those people who, in the, in the dark ages, that had none, none of that. And I'm asking myself the question, what, what, what has happened? What has changed? We have become reliant on self, and we've become reliant on technology, and we've become reliant on our own 
we and our we are we are self-made men and women, and I have my independence, and nobody tells me what to do. Even Pastor Ron or the preacher or the teacher, nobody's telling me what to do. This is my life. Well, God is saying you can live your life, but one of these days you stand before me, and you have to give an account. You know what I said to you last week? It scares me. Hell scares me. And if we don't live our lives for God on this earth, there is eternity. Eternity in heaven or in hell. We have to make up our mind. Church, we have heard the gospel over and over again. We have no excuse. We have no excuse not to pray. We have no excuse not to fast. We have no excuse not to be in the word of God. We have no excuse not to be in worship. As we sit in church today, there are people who have walked for miles and miles in mud and in dirt to get to church. And we have a vehicle and we have all the transportation, but we cannot find ourselves in the house of God. How can we thumb our, face, thumb our fingers and our hands in the face of God? How long do you think God is going to take it? The judgment is sure. And God is saying to us, let's get real. Let's get real with God. Let's get real with serving God. Let's get back to the Word of God. Let's forsake sin and unrighteousness and turn to God with our whole heart. Someone said, it's not fear that we have heard the gospel thousands and thousands of times. And there are people who have not heard the gospel once. Is that fear? Is that fear that all the resources of the North American church are here in North America and, and, and less than 2.5% of the, of the budget of the churches in North America is spent on evangelism and reaping the harvest? Is, is it fair? No, it's not. Because there are people that need to know Jesus Christ. So we have to get back to the basic of prayer and fasting, we have to get back to the basics of the Word. The Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. I have printed off, and you can go on the internet and get it for yourself. I'm encouraging every person in this church, not because this is Pastor Ron's I don't know what term to use it, but it's my soapbox. It's not. Because I believe that the Spirit of God spoke to me about what we need to do as individuals and as a church to get victory in our lives. Is seeking God for an hour and getting into the Word of God. I printed off a reading schedule for, every, for, for, for you if you want one. If you don't want this one, you can go on the Internet and print off your own. But I want to encourage you to get into the Bible, into the Word of God. This the Bible is the roadmap. It is the book of instruction that we need to follow, and we need to get into the Word of God. I am, I'm, I'm, you know, the Spirit of God is just revealing stuff to me. There are some of you that have never even opened up the Bible in weeks, and some of you in months. Mm -hmm. Oh God. I'm scared, folks. I'm afraid. I'm afraid for the souls of many believers. Because this is not a game. This is serious. Because it has to do with our souls. And... We need to find the time in our lives to spend on the things that are important to Almighty God. We have been too lackadaisical. And we thought we, me included, the church in North America. The church in North America is in decline. 
You know why it's in decline? It's in decline because we as the church, we are the church. You are the church. Pastor Ron's not the church, we are the church. And when the church is in decline, people are not getting saved. People are not getting born again because we're not witnessing, we're not sharing, we're not living Christian lives in the world, we're not being soul, we're not being light. That's right. And we're not having an impact and effect on the lives of people. So the church, the church in North America, the church in North America is in decline. Over 50% of the churches in North America are less around the average between 75 and 50 members. So all the mega churches like T.D. Jakes Church and all of those churches, it's not the norm. norm. And, and sometimes I wonder in some of those mega churches, and I don't know, that's God's, God has to judge. How many people are really, truly serving God in those places? Because to God, it's not about the number, it's about the heart. And God loves numbers, don't, don't get me wrong. And we're shooting for that 500 member mark, but if we're going to shoot from the, for the 500 member mark, we're going to have to start at the basics. That's right. You don't, you don't build on mud, you build on a solid foundation, and you are the foundation. You are the foundation in your family. You are the foundation for your friends. You are the foundation for your children. F folks, if we are not living the Christian life before our kids, we're going to lose them. That's right. And you're going to blame the church and say, well, the church didn't do this, and the church didn't do that, and the pastor didn't do that, and this didn't do that, and they didn't talk to me this way, and they didn't talk to me that way. Guess what? When we stand before God, none of those excuses are going to hold water. Who did you what, or who said what about you, or who caused you to leave the church, or who caused you to walk away from God? It will not matter. Because you had an opportunity. Parents, family members, we have a responsibility. Basic number five, we've got to get back to witness. You know what the, I was reading a book, you know what it said? 85% of Christians will never win anybody to Jesus. 85%. Over 75% of people that get saved, guess how they get saved? Through door-to-door -door witnessing, through knocking on the door? No. You know why? How? Through me going and picking them up. And inviting and bringing them to church. 75% of people. When was the last time you invited a friend or somebody to church? When was the last time you said, look, I'm gonna, no, don't worry about my clean car. I'm going to go pick somebody up. Don't worry about the gas. Look, you know, the thing is, we need to have faith, folks. If it takes gas to go pick somebody up, have faith. Trust God. God will get you. God, God will provide. Isn't God able to provide the gas? He's able to do it. Money is no issue to God. God will do it for you. God will take care of the needs in your life. God will provide. Don't worry about it. Just do what God has asked you to do. And He will provide what you need. You know the other thing that, that God just revealed to me today is worship. Church attendance. Turn with me in your Bibles to um, Hebrews chapter 10. And I just realized something and I need to share with you. 